January 22nd, 2015, beginning at 6.30. I'd like to call the meeting to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Supervisor Dern? Here. Supervisor Fisher? Here. Chairman Mayor? Present. Supervisor Racky? Here. Supervisor Rook? Here. And Madam Clerk, have we met all of the rules of the Open Meetings Law? Yes, we have. <laughs> and we can begin with citizens' comments. Angie Mansock, South 51, West 25375, Glendale Road. Many topics of concern, such a limited time, but that was the ideal when the limitations on citizen comments imposed shortly after your election in April of 2013 to limit open dialogue. The agenda tonight includes another appeal for an extension of non compliance, an ordinance that repeals and recreates ambulance fees, and one on the capital plan. Let's start with the non-compliance issue. I had the opportunity to visit the homes in question. I say homes because the complainant is across the street neighbor. I found the home in question very well maintained. I'd be happy to be their neighbor. The complainant is a different story. From the pieces of plywood laying haphazardly and clear view against the garage, to the small wheels also haphazardly in the yard, to the broken protective fence on the pool, the complainant's home is the problem. Let me remind you they want the garage police. No one do the yard barbecue police. No one will be free to harass and badger your constituents who have had their shots for years. In many cases, decades. You are causing hardship for people in your community by the choices you are making. These people are doing no harm. Acting on anonymous complaints. Acting on complaints where you are causing unnecessary hardship is wrong on so many levels. A quick review of the town would indicate the majority of people have some issue that someone could take issue with. Are you trying to create a police state? Knock it off. Stop doing harm to people. A shed that has been there for decades is not a 30-day emergency. The capital plan has again no documentation we are not a packet for the community to view. Keeping information away from the public seems to be a theme. The worst, the lack of disclosure for $700,000 in our budget, and recently money has been moved in a budget without a plan of full discussion. The $60,000 generated a new eliminator without discussion was in the budget for a reason. When the tornado struck Eagle in 2010, the community needed a central location that had power. We had, so we had no such location and wanted to be sure we did. You took that from the families in this community without a word, without an input, outside of the public budget process. That move, like many others, was not in the best interest of the families of the town of Waukesha. Finally, the ambulance fees. I cannot find the current ordinances regarding fees on your website. Have you eliminated what was approved and not the law by a keystroke? Do you even know who had the laws on the books? There are certain people here who should remember they were updated in February of 2013. I question what you are planning to do tonight. Is it illegal? Unless they are town board has changed ordinances, like the ambulance fees, through an inclusive process, our board did, to inform the public, we placed, placed formal publications in the newspaper, we posted to the boards, and we held public meetings to honor input, public input. You change laws when there are two people in the room and nothing in the packet. Transparency? Yes, it is transparently clear you are not working in our best interest by choice and design. Seems the standard now is it is the minimum we need to do. What a mantra, what a shame. So just, just for a point of clarification, was the complaint of the non-compliant anonymous or did you know who it was? In this case, they have been anonymous. Oh. So in this case, you knew who it was? It was in your packet, and I was glad I'm to I'm just asking, there. you said it was anonymous. I said they have been anonymous. I didn't say this complaint was anonymous. Okay. Anybody else? 
see nobody move on. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good evening, Sandy Hobb, West 230, South 3827, Milky Way Road. I have just one thing I wanted to touch on tonight, and it was the thing that uh, Ms. Van Sock led off with. Um, you know, I was here when the ordinance was changed. I know there was a discussion between various individuals on the board as to how much um, flexibility it was going to be in the ordinance. Um, and I viewed the ordinance as reducing your flexibility and um, I would like to see, um, I, I know that everyone makes a decision. They know and believe in their heart they're making the right decision. And they should know that. But that doesn't mean that every decision that they make is the right decision. And it's okay to go back and revisit things. I think that was a bad decision. I don't think it makes Waukesha, the town of Waukesha, a great place to live. I would like you to empower yourself to have more flexibility. And, and, in a, and I did read the letter uh, from the inspector and it mentioned this kind of weather and coming in and asking for an extension. But my remembrance from meetings past is we're now limited to 30 days. And it just seems that even if you're going to write it down, it should be a seasonal kind of a thing. Or if it's after Thanksgiving or you know whatever it is. But you know, to expect somebody to jump out in 30 days or suffer financial penalties, it just doesn't seem friendly. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. If there's no objections from other members of the board, I'd like to take the closed session first. Uh, just before we move on, I have the policy here somewhere. It's in, everyone has it on their desk. Oh, here it is. So just for clarification, as it pertains to our uh, non-compliance policy, <coughs> I believe that step one of our current policy, which was recently adopted by all the members of this board, all compliance inspection requests need to be submitted in writing by a person, filed with the town clerk, signed by the town chairman prior to staff conducting a site inspection. If the person wants to be kept anonymous, <coughs> then they shall be directed to speak to the town board member and request the town board member to write a complaint and sign it on their behalf. The town board members are not required to serve as a complainant for a person, but may do so at their discretion. So I'm not really sure under our current policy how we have anonymous requests. Perhaps that was the policy previous, but it's not the policy at this time. When was that policy put in place? Uh, initially, I think it was passed. Can somebody, we updated it, but not, in, not pertaining to that, just this last meeting. I believe the policy two meetings ago, three meetings ago, relatively recently. So people have, have been affected. Well, that was the, I mean, we can only update things so quickly from the previous board, so. The previous board never. We're going to move on. Thank you. Um, if there's no objections from the board, I'd like to take the closed session first so that we can get Mr. Macy on his way. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, we do have our Representative from Horton Insurance here. If we could get them first and get her out of here. I have no no problem with that. Anybody else? No objection. <clears throat> Come on down. Come on down. This is Michelle Strauss with um, Horton, the Horton Group. And if you, if we it'll go ahead and present what you have, and if we have questions for you later. Sure. Um, and I certainly am not here to take any more of your time than I and I need to. So for those of you that don't know me, um, I am Michelle Strauss. I'm with the Horton Group. We've represented municipalities in Wisconsin since 1973. We work with almost 800 public entity clients. Um, I've been with the agency for 25 years, and um, I believe I work with the town the majority of those years. So it's been some time. It's been a great relationship. I did give you a policy book in advance. Um, we are independent agents. Um, the carrier that provides the insurance company or insurance coverage is AAIC, American Alternative Insurance Corporation. It's one of the largest 
um, insurance companies in the world. It's an A plus rated insurer. So, um, did you did you folks have any questions about the booklet? Any of the information in it? Anything I can answer? <clears throat> my questions got answered. Uh, Jimmy had submitted a few questions to you, so my my questions were answered. Okay. It, um, the property insurance at all has a thousand dollar deductible. That's pretty standard. And there's coverage in there for flood, earthquake. Um, there's also inland marine portable equipment coverage, which includes um, cheap bucolsis fire equipment. Um, the apparatus, the emergency apparatus, they're insured on an agreed amount basis, which means the insurance company will replace the fire and ambulance apparatus with new apparatus meeting current specifications up to the dollar shown. And uh, we encourage the town to look at the dollar values um, on an annual basis. The liability limits are within the norm of the range that we see for a town your size. I'm sure Attorney Macy can, can let you know if he sees anything that strikes him um, that might be out of the ordinary. The um, premiums are a little less than 3% higher than they were last year, which is in, within normal parameters. Most insurance companies are, are having a 5% increase in the public sector this year. So um, the biggest um, increase that you have is going to be in the workers' comp area. I did include all the loss data for you folks. The um, modification factor has gone from 1.26 to 1.66 due to claims. So that has caused a substantial increase um, based on that modification factor. That gets applied against the state's manual premium. So that's a substantial jump. But hopefully, um, you know, when we look through the claims, there isn't anything glaring. And I know we spoke with Supervisor Radke about that. It, there's so many different situations that it's not as though we can engineer our way out of it. So hopefully things will turn around and become a little more positive for you with, with that approach. We do have um, loss control available. And I know that the DPW has worked with loss control previously. We're always happy to provide it. We just don't see any commonality to the claims at this point in time. So, and were there any other any questions for me? Anything else I might be able to provide for you at this time? No. Mr. Chairman, I, I had indicated to the chairman uh, previously, uh, and I know we don't have time to do this this year, and I just want to pass it along to the. I have seen a dramatic change over the last couple of years in what the companies are offering to the municipal to the municipalities i would say you know when i started here 30 35 years ago pretty much everybody had the same coverage it was just a matter of dollars and cents and you made your decision on what you wanted your deductible to be or things like that mm -hmm. that has changed and i think uh, for the next year maybe you could educate them more about what your policy has versus what the competition and i'll give you an example one of my towns currently has one where it's a $5,000 deductible, and anytime anything happens, they got to pay $5,000. I know yours isn't that way. On the liability side. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is I've seen a dramatic change in whether they're covering Zoning Board of Appeals, Board of Adjustment, uh, Tax Review Board issues or not, writ of certiorari matters or not. Um, I'm amazed uh, one community got sued. Uh, they were not covered by their coverage. They then turned around and sued the neighboring community to bring them into the lawsuit, and the second community was covered. So I know there's dramatic changes yes. over the years, and I just have been recommending to all of my clients that maybe they have to look at that. I'm not recommending you change, or I'm not trying to put anybody, you know, but I think they need to start to realize that it's no longer, you know, everybody's getting, every company's offering, the, and, and am I stating that correctly? You are. Um, there have been some new players in the industry that have had less than stellar coverages, but terrific rates, and that's probably what you're seeing. The good news is, Attorney Macy, that in this case, um, this is the Cadillac of coverage. This is not the lowest price coverage, 
but it is some of the broadest coverage. It extends to zoning. It extends to claims of tax. It um, provides injunctive coverage. There is no policy deductibles. And the history of the town has been that there have been claims presented. And I, I believe that you'll find that they've been well handled by the insurer and well covered. So it is definitely a, an excellent policy. And so I would just suggest that maybe, and I'm going to be suggesting it on all 40 of our clients, so it's not going to right. surprise you right. that you not necessarily go out to the other companies and ask them what they're offering, but you have that expertise and you can provide that, that if, and I don't want to mention any other names, but right. you can show how yours is the Cadillac and why they should stay with you, and I think that just would help. Well, what we're doing now, Attorney Macy, is for any of our clients that do seek quotes from other carriers, we're writing an RFP to try to protect our clients from some of the, the, the less rich coverages. Because like I said, they do come in at very low premiums. But there's a cost for that. So, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make those points for the chair of the, uh, who handles that. Yeah, just, just a point of clarification. I have met with Michelle, and we did go through a lot of that. Um, I am somewhat versed in the private sector as far as insurance, and I get pretty well educated on the municipal side of things. Um, more than anything, I think you have to um, compare those types of coverage. Um, using an agent such as Horton, you're right, they have that ability to offer you particular choices. And we did look at some of that. And, um, based on some of the expertise from Michelle and some research, we found exactly what you were saying. Um, but we did also find at least what was um, somewhat of a relevation to me is that the rates for a, a municipality is considerably less than a commercial venture. So I was surprised. And the work comp rates, which really is where the increase is, well, the insurance company doesn't have any say in that. It's all mandated by the state. So regardless of where you go to, you're going to pay the same. <coughs> any other questions for Michelle? As it pertains to the workman's comp, and in particular the fire department, in these communities like ours where we have either volunteer or paid on call, a lot of people on the fire department who have jobs and incomes outside of the fire department that are probably substantially more than what they get paid from the fire department. What protections are in place and how do we cover those people? You might not be the right person to ask, but oh, yeah. if, if a person you know, is a full-time employee at another company who makes you know, whatever their income is and gets hurt on the fire department job, what provisions do we have for that? That is an excellent question. We do have in your packet an accident and sickness policy, and that is provides protection for the paid on call staff over and above workers' compensation and sometimes instead of workers' compensation. Uh, for example, I am the local representative for the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. We had four deaths in 2012, three of which were not covered by workers' compensation. One was compensable. Those three that were not covered by workers' comp would have been picked up by your accident and sickness policy. The only thing I'd like to mention is at some point in time, you might want to consider increasing your weekly disability coverage. And that would be something to look at in the next budget cycle. Because where workers' compensation may leave your, your paid on call member high and dry, you'd like them to be able to have a disability rate um, that would help the family. Um, if you had a chance to look through that policy, I, I know there's a lot in that booklet. Um, there's some new coverages. For example, if you have a member that's injured in the line of duty and they're not able to go back to that day job, the policy will pay their insurance premium because their employer won't have any place to draw it if there's no income. So there's $12,000 of coverage there. So there's a death benefit, there's a disability benefit, um, some medical expense, um, there's family expense, there's $100 a day for every day of hospitalization that your, your member might be hospitalized. 
Um, but uh, it's a great question, and I would encourage you to consider in the next, next budget cycle looking at a little higher rated disability. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, just one real quick question, a very much open-ended question, but um, do you ever, in your vast experience, we have a, we have a employee handbook, mm -hmm. if you will, that the town walks out here. Have you ever seen or reviewed that, or is there any potential for an interface between the insurance coverage or providing, particularly with regards to workman's compensation employee handbook? Is there any interface that might be between those in your experience or should be reviewed? Well, I believe we had looked at your employee handbook some time ago. I can't I can't claim that it would be the current employee handbook. Um, and usually we will glance through, but we will um, turn that back to your town attorney for recommendation. We'll go through with respect to insurance. But beyond that, we don't provide legal advice. No, I understand that. I guess my follow-up question would be then, is that something that you would be willing to do? Is there a cost for doing that? There's no cost for any of our services. Okay, so that's something mm -hmm. that we could consider. Thank and you. we're happy to review any contracts that the town may have also. Thank you. Anything else I can answer for you folks? Attorney Macy, thank you for letting me go first. <laughs> Have a nice evening. Thank if you. I can do anything else, let me know. Thank you for coming. <laughs> then if there's no objections, I'd like to move on to 10 A and B. You are hereby notified that the town board of the town of Waukesha will convene in May upon duly made motion and seconded and acted upon by roll call vote as required in the Wisconsin Stats 1985 sub 1 sub C. Wisconsin Stats 1985 Sub 1 Sub G go into closed session during the course of the meeting. The town board members may attend the closed session. The purpose of the closed session will be as follows. The purpose of the meeting is for deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session pursuant to Sub 19.85 Sub 1 Sub E and or to confer with legal counsel who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted with respect to litigation which is likely to become involved as authorized under 1985 sub 1 sub G. Specifically to be discussed are issues regarding the incorporation petition of the town of Brookfield. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second? I'll second. Roll call vote please. Supervisor Kerr. Aye. Supervisor Fisher. Aye. Chairman Merrick. Aye. Supervisor Radke. Aye. Supervisor Wolf. Aye. And we will move in closed session. This should not take that long, maybe 10 or 15 minutes.